Good morning. I figured I would uh, give a little bit of an update on uh, what happened here in New Jersey uh, under Ida, the hurricane that hit us. I uh, really wasn't going to say too much about it. It's, uh, it's a rainstorm. It came down pretty hard. We got like 11 inches in a few hours and it flooded. Uh, I think there's over 50 dead people because of this thing. Half 50 dead people. Uh, there would have been more, uh, obviously, uh, you know, people, there's some people that were out that shouldn't have been out, like the guy in the uh, 2014 Corvette Stingray, who decided that, you know, he owned it for three days and it would be a good idea to take that thing out and submerse it under, well, it was fully submersed, three feet over the roof from what I understand, and uh, he survived, but he destroyed a very fairly rare car. They only made 200 of them that year in the Stingray model, from what I understand. Uh, but anyways, that's just the way it is. There was a lot of people uh, that were out that shouldn't have been out, and there were people that were out there that were just had no idea what was going to happen. Um, you know, one of them was a friend of mine, Mr. R. Peak. If I've spoken about this already, he and he had uh, scheduled to come down to see me on his way to Georgia with his truck and it's uh, <coughs> kind of an unfortunate circumstance because he had a problem and his truck had to get towed while he was up I, I think he was in Connecticut or Massachusetts but uh, anyways he his truck had over overheated and uh, he had put a water pump on it previously, you know, like a couple days earlier, or a week earlier, uh, in preparation for the uh, for the trip, and there was a couple of issues that he had with his water pump that he wasn't too sure that it was going to seal up, but it had sealed up. It was okay. There was nothing wrong with it. Uh, but anyway, due to uncertain circumstances, he overheated the truck, and then he just needed some water to get it going again, and off he went which, you know, is generally the way these things go when you're on a trip. Uh, but it delayed him. And in that delay, he was to be to my place by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it was, there was no rain. It was just a little bit of a mist here and there. Nothing spectacular, nothing that you couldn't work out in or anything. I mean, it was just a regular day uh, until later that day. When, by the time he got uh, his truck fixed you know or some water into it and put the radiator cap on that's what happened he he left the radiator cap off so that it would burp and then absent-mindedly shut the hood and you know drove to new jersey or massachusetts where he had this problem which delayed him to the point where he ended up in the middle of this hurricane and uh he probably more than likely would have been severely hurt or even died in this uh, flood that he was in and I know I've said it already and you can look again but it was uh, an R peak R just a regular R P E E K um, and you will see he videotaped what what happened and uh, of course they're he's saying that I'm a hero and I'm just a guy you know I, I just I would have done it for anybody you know if I got a phone call say hey Wesley uh, um, there's somebody trapped in a car. Can you get a tractor here? We can't get to him. I'd have run right down there no matter who it was. It wouldn't have mattered if it was a crack whore in a, in a truck. It wouldn't have mattered. I went and got them and hoped and prayed that the crack whore would change her ways. But, you know, this was this was my friend and he called and, he, and it was just not even a thought that went through my mind. I got to go get him. So anyway, his truck drowned it out and uh, literally drowned it out. The uh, water level was about eight inches from going in the passenger side door window. Uh, he was on his seat with his feet, stand, kneeling on his seat with his feet planted below him. His feet were soaking wet because the seat was submerged in water. Uh, that's how deep it was. And it was no fault to his own. I mean, it wasn't that deep when he got in there. Uh, the Dodge truck has a siphon tube that goes to the intake that is very low. It actually sucks from behind the the left side bumper, uh, the driver's side bumper, just below there, and that water just went bloop, right up and drowned out his truck. Not a good design. As a matter of fact, if he would have uh, 
disconnected that thing, he would have drove through and we wouldn't have had an event at all. He'd have came to the place, pulled into the farm, we'd have had a nice time, played banjo, talked a lot, and did whatever we did. Um, but there are there was a guy over here, his name was Barry Snyder, and he's dead. Uh, he got out of his truck and they found him two miles downstream, hung up in bushes. He was he was dead, and he was a local fellow. Uh, people say, uh, what do you do in a flood? Do you get out and try to get to safety, or do you stay in the vehicle and, uh, you know, ride it out if you can? Well, every situation is different. Uh, in these flooding situations, you, you just don't know. I mean, if your car drowns out in a foot of water and it doesn't look like it's going to rise at all, you know, depending on the speed of that water, I mean, a foot of water rushing at say 30 miles an hour will take your legs right out from under you and yes some of this water the water that was near mr peak when i was getting him out of that truck i'll bet that water was running 20 miles an hour and it was four five feet deep four feet deep a solid three and a half feet deep four feet deep uh you can see it in the video as i drove the tractor in and it went over the rate weight bracket and into, into the radiator of the tractor and if you know how big a 6210R is, you'll know that the water at that point was probably four plus feet deep. He would have been swept away and they wouldn't have found him for miles downstream. It would have been terrible. Uh, so he was thinking that if he could, if he had to, he could get out and get on top of his truck. Um, quite honestly, if he hadn't had that trailer loaded down the way it is and the truck loaded down the way it is or what it is, um, he probably would have floated downstream and into that bank that was down there because there was a car that was in the video. You can see it and it disappears. It floated away and smacked into the into the guardrail before the bank. There was lawnmowers out of a lawnmower shop that were up against the uh, guardrail uh, that that goes over that creek. They floated out of the uh, lawnmower repair shop, shop that was about 150 yards away. Um, I'm sure there were a bunch that went down the creek and are <laughs> never to be seen again or salvaged or they'll be salvaged downstream sometime. But uh, So when people ask me how bad it was in New Jersey, I'm 49 years old and I've never seen it this bad in my life. I've seen the ice come down the river uh, and back up and block up uh, areas and strip trees down from the ice flow. Uh, that's in the wintertime and uh, flood the banks, but that's a uh, that's basically an ice dam, and, uh, you know, they can blast that or get a track on a bridge somewhere and beat that out of the way. But the for the most part, this was just pure water that came down in a matter of, I'm going to say three hours, three to four hours. It was just an absolute downpour. Flemington got almost 12 inches of rain. My parents were, my mom went to the eye doctor and was stuck there for hours while they investigated her eye. She has to go for eye surgery. I'm not going to get into it, um, but it's a good thing that she went to the eye doctor because she could have, it can be, it could be way worse, but it's not in the end of the world because she's scheduled for surgery in November. Uh, she's just got to struggle with uh, wearing these crazy magnifying glasses to read and see stuff that she needs to see until then. And then she'll probably have 2020 vision. You never know. Uh, I don't know cataracts and things like that are what's going on but uh didn't i say i wasn't going to get into that i did say i wasn't going to get into that so you know that they were stuck in it and uh the water came into that my dad's car he has a subaru i think it's an outback or a forester i think it's a forester it's a nice little car it's not not a not it's a nice little car i like the car when you drive it it's comfortable and it's a fuel efficient little car he loves the car um and anyway, the insurance company was like, well, if it's an electronic problem, we're prob they're probably going to total the car. Just pay you out of the car and you'll get a new car or something similar to a new car. Of course, it's going to have to pay out over top of that for the new car because, you know, insurance companies, when they total your car, it's totaled. Uh, you, you have to go pay the difference between what they pay you and what the new car is worth. So, uh, And when he said that, I was like, well, look, these things... Once you get electronic gremlins, you will always have electronic gremlins. They don't go away. Those gremlins run around in there, and one time it's the uh, speed sensor, the next time it's your brake controller. And he did say that when he put his cruise control on, it felt like it was dragging. 
you know, and then when he took the cruise control off, it was like the brakes got released and he was able to just go freely. So there's definitely some electronic gremlins in there and he's pretty much decided that the insurance company is either going to completely tear this thing apart and replace all the electronics that are in it and or they're going to total it and he's going to get a new car. Uh, I say he gets a new car. I actually talked to a tow truck driver that deals with these sorts of things all the time whenever they happen and uh, a friend of mine uh, and uh, he says get rid of it. It's not worth your problems. You get because dad takes long trips and stuff and mom and dad go in this thing. It has to be reliable. And you know, could you imagine getting like four or five hundred miles away or a thousand miles away and this thing just locking up because of a flood because some insurance company said, nah, we're not gonna total it. We're just gonna do this, that, and the other thing. So anyway, so it was that bad. Um, dad said the car was rocking, you know, but they were out there due to, you know, circumstances that uh, weren't like the idiots that were coming out of their driveway as I was driving through a foot of water. There's, I don't have, vi I've got video of it and you've seen it already, but the, there are paths of destruction through fields where four foot, five foot deep ditches overflowed and by 10 feet and the water just took swaths of soybeans out. There's a, there's a mill pond down near to where Mr. Peak was stranded and I never saw it that full. It looked to me, well, the mill pond was blown over, the driveway washed away. There's a park over here in Flemington. They say it had 10 feet of water in it. They've condemned the park. It looked like they went out with a track hoe and dug all the stone out of the walking paths. It's crazy. It's about a foot deep. It just washed that stone out and down the stream it went. There was just a lot of destruction. You can tell the, the houses that have water in their basement. My house had water in the basement. Uh, we have to, there's, we've moved some stuff around and we're going to be, uh, getting a dumpster. I got a lot of stuff that's got to get thrown away. So there was a lot of destruction there. My parents had water in their basement. Um, there's no sump pump in my parents' basement. They actually have a drain and it's a six inch corrugated, uh, pipe that when they built the house was laid, coiled around in the stone and they, you know, so that any water that would come under the house would actually have a place to go out. And the volume of water that went into that house and out was too too great. And it wasn't bad, just a little bit of water, but it came up through. Actually, my mom said where those where that corrugated pipe is, they poured the concrete over top of that area. She says, you can follow that around the basement where the, it cracked. It, it did, it cracked. So... And that was below the crushed stone. So they laid the crushed stone on top of the pipe so that the water would go to that pipe and, and shoot out. And I've seen it come out of that pipe pretty wicked fast in the past. When I was a kid, it was something else. We had a, I don't know, something that stuffed a nest up in there and it plugged it up and the water came in the basement three inches deep. And I went out and dug my hand around in there and reached up and pulled out a rat's nest the size of a base softball, you know. And then the water came out and the water stopped coming in. But it gets kind of crazy when that happens. Uh, but there's there's destruction there. It's got to be got to be dealt with. Got to be dealt with. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of places. There's houses that had water right up into their front living room. And uh, they'll probably total those houses out. They'll get new houses out of them. It's bad. Uh, there was a hurricane. There's a fellow that has a truck that I want to buy. Uh, it's a uh, silage truck, you know, with a dumping bed, uh, dumping body to move uh, compost and uh, and uh, whatever I want. I mean, if I want to go up and get fertilizer, I can go get fertilizer in this thing. It's got a, it's got a, you know, an old come along motor in it, you know, it's with a 13 speed or 12. Uh, is it a 13 speed? It's a 13 speed, 13 speed come along and or Cummins and uh, big cam Cummins. It's a 1979 Ford. Uh, L9000 or L8000. I think it's L9000. Uh, so uh, he he offered it to me and it's it's a really cool truck. I'm going to go get it. I can go up and get lime with this thing as well and, and uh, make things a little easier. Put farmer plates on it and just go. Farm, farm use plates on it actually and go and be okay. Uh, so he offered it to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him up on his offer. He says it might need some new tires and I've got those laying around here. Uh, get that done, but down in his neck of the woods, 
tornadoes came and it made national news I think there was a New Jersey's largest dairy is down there they had 600 cows uh, I think 300, 300 of the 600 cows were buried in debris and a hundred of them had to be put down or died uh, it was really bad harvester silos that just bunk, flopped over and uh, you know they're damned expensive silos as well they're very expensive silos and, uh, you know, they still use them and there's plenty of them around and, you know, insurance companies are going to just going to cringe on those back in the 60s and 70s when they were building those things, they were a hundred plus thousand dollars way back then. So I imagine they're still valuable to that aspect. They might be 75, 80 thousand dollars used. You don't know. Uh, at least a used one, they can take it down, check the panels because they're, they got, they're porcelain coated steel. And the worst thing is a kid with a 22 or a birdshot, you know, they'll they'll hit those silos and pock off a piece of that porcelain on the inside and then it rusts through. Uh, tell me how I know uh, or ask me how I know and I'll tell you I don't know, but I do know because I know somebody that did this. The kid got up there and started shooting sparrows off the, off the ladder and the next thing is there's holes through it and spoiled, spoiled grain. Uh, it was not good. <laughs> they had to replace panels on it, and they were not happy about this kid. And it happened quite rapidly. Um, but anyway, yeah, so there's just like the, the finger of God, as they call it, and wiped away million-dollar homes down in that area, and the barns, the, the houses, the facilities that were just destroyed, tractors and pieces. I actually have some photos of it. I can show you. They're, they're online. But uh, I can probably show you pretty quickly. Where are you, Mr. Joe? All right, so they're not going to be the greatest pictures, but I'll show you a picture of the house, maybe. So you can probably see that used to be a very expensive home. And let me see if I can just move up here. This is the farm. Oh, come on. All right, so I'm going to zoom in on these silos. You can see a couple of those silos are just flat. But that was the dairy barn, the dairy farm. I think the legumes are there. Uh, here's just a couple of photographs, aerials, of how bad that was. So this is how bad it was, guys, in New Jersey and elsewhere in the world. I know there are several people that are wondering what it was like. Uh, I was out pulling on my generator to get it started because we were in the middle of a brownout. And I heard what sounded like a jet plane above me, and I thought, uh-oh. Um, I've never seen a tornado. I've seen the destruction of a tornado. But I've been told that it sounds like a, a low-flying jet or a freight train without the clickety-clack, you know. And I was like, I think I should probably go in the house now. I mean, I was drenched right down to my damn underwear. I mean, you take your underwear off and it's drenched like you jumped in a river. The water was coming down so hard, I could not get the generator to start. And I, I couldn't even see to take it apart. The water was coming off so fast. It was, I, it was just awful. Uh, it was awful. I mean, the only time I ever saw rain this bad was when I was in the Philippines and you literally golf ball sized droplets of rain is what falls in the Philippines in the rainy season or when it pours. I mean, golf ball size, these drops, unbelievable the size of the drops of rain, you know, here, the size of a pea, you know, once in a while, you'll get some larger ones, but this was just like a wall of water coming down. It was crazy. I couldn't even see my truck when I came around the corner of the house. It was pouring so hard. I had gasoline over there, so I could put gas in this generator to get it going. Well, I couldn't get it going. The next day, uh, that was when I, you know, Richard had called and I got him, and I had to take him back to Maine, and uh, Timothy turned around and I had him come over and told him, I said, look, pull the float bowl off and uh, get that to, to move. The needle valve, I think, is stuck in the stuck in the up position. There might, you know, this alcohol-based gasoline or this ethanol-based gasoline pulls moisture, and that's what happens, and it starts to rot your carburetors if you don't 
put fresh gas or start it every once in a while. Now I started this thing about two months ago and it started up just fine, but summer happened and uh, that's what you end up with is, is this these problems. So anyhow, that's, that's just the way it is. He got the generator going and the foot and a half of water that was in my basement got pumped out and it, it just, it is what it is, you know. It's just a good opportunity for me to go down there, get rid of the crap I need to get rid of, and save the stuff that I need to save. And there's some projects that I'd like to do in my basement that I'll probably do this winter, or maybe not even this winter. I might do it this fall. I don't know. <clears throat> as soon as I get this hay crop off that's out there, it's getting the shit pounded out of it by 11 inches of rain. Oh, and yesterday it rained again. And oh, today it looks like it's going to rain again here too. So it's just not been a good situation. I'm only about a third done with the hay that I have to do. Uh, I've got property owners that are flipping out like, what are you going to do this? Why can't you get this done? Other people got stuff done. Well, other people do a few hundred acres or a couple hundred acres. I do a few thousand acres and you've got to understand that I, it's been raining and I can't do everything I'd like to do with all this rain. I had guys call me just as Ida was hitting us. Hey, uh, do you, are we on schedule to have our hay made? Because, you know, I know it's going to rain a little bit, but can you probably get it off like the next week or a day or two after? I'm like, okay, if we get under an inch, maybe I'll be in there in a day or two. I said, but if we get over an inch, we got 11. What are you going to do? Nothing. Not going to do anything. Dad went out to pick up bales that were left out there, um, not stacked. He says, it's amazing. He said the water was shooting out from the front of the tires of the tractor and the wagon. He said, it didn't cut ruts, but there's two inches of water still laying on these fields. What do you do? You can't do anything. You can't do a damn thing. So I'm going to be looking at the weather reports, and hopefully today it's it doesn't rain and it perks off, but I got an engine to get pistons and rods out of today. That's no big deal. I'm going to, I'm going to do it in the, in the, I was going to pull the whole thing out, but there's so many, you know, dodges are a pain in the ass, right? They're real easy to work on from the outside, but if you have to pull that engine and transmission, you really need a lift and I'm just ready to go snip snip with some wires and refuse them back together again because there's some nightmares there which I wouldn't do but I'm actually gonna I've got it uh, unbolted from the frame I'm gonna raise it up pull the pan out set it back down and then I can get to those rods and then I'm gonna pull the heads off I, I'm pretty sure I can see the bent rod I'm sure it's either a crushed piston or a bent rod or both uh, if it bent a rod no big deal pull the head on that side pull that rod out slap a new piston and rod down in there and off we go i really don't want to do the whole engine i think it's not necessary the thing doesn't really have that many hours on it or miles on it i go by hours because of tractors but miles but uh if it is i'll look i'll see how bad it was there was no water down in the engine per se maybe a thimble full it was milky when we started it up but then it evaporated out very rapidly within the 45 minutes that it was running. All that water had evaporated out of the oil. But it's going to definitely get sprayed down and, you know, all that moisture out of there, new oil put in. And, and uh, she should run. I mean, Richard's going to take it back to down to Georgia and life will be good for him. But that's the plan. So anyways, 23 minutes of talking here. You're probably bored of listening to my voice. Uh, yeah, dead people. Uh Going down 287, there was a dead guy. Motorcycle versus uh, uh, Amazon van versus semi-truck. Either it was a dead deer in the road that was ground up that bad, or it was the dude on the motorcycle, but I don't know. They were running with tape measures and all sorts of things, and that's usually the thing they do with, uh, with uh, yeah, fatalities. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy, and back to regular content. Tomorrow, maybe?